I moved these three tomato plants from under my grow lights and planted them directly into this garden bed seven days ago. I did not harden off or acclimate these plants to the outdoor weather or sun intensity in any way. They're receiving six to eight hours of sunlight. It's going to be 100 degrees here in zone 9B today and they look fantastic. No leaf burn and no stunting of growth. Hi everyone. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, my name is Riley, and today we're talking about how we can avoid the process of hardening off our tomato plants before we move them to the final home in our gardens. We're going to go over two main topics in this video today. The first topic is how I use my two-level grow light system. The second topic is how you can choose an LED grow light like this one that will allow you to move your tomato starts directly into your garden from under these grow lights without having to harden them off. The way that I use my two level grow light system is the top level is where I start my seeds. I use a T5 fluorescent high output fixture with four bulbs. The color temperature of the bulbs is 6,500 K and the entire unit puts out about 10,000 lumens. And that is perfect for a single 10 inch by 20 inch seed starting tray. After one to three weeks of growing in these six cell seed trays, I transplant my tomato plants into a three inch square nursery pot like this. I'll then put them back under the fluorescence for three to five days, just in case there's any transplant shock and to get them used to being under the lights again. After those three to five days of acclimating my plants after the transplant, I then move them underneath the LED for the next four to six weeks of growth before I move them out into my garden. They'll typically go from this size to about this size, at which point these go directly into the garden. Now I've been testing LED grow lights for about two years. And although they work perfectly for that last four to six weeks of indoor growth before we move them outside. I have not found LED grow lights for seed starting or that first one to three weeks of growth that work as well as T5 high output fluorescence. If I were to start my seeds under this LED grow light, and I've tried it, it's very difficult to dial in the distance of the light to the plants. What ends up happening is too close and those young seedlings just burn up from the light intensity. And too far away, and those young seedlings just reach for the sky and end up growing four or five inches tall, becoming way too leggy. I'll continue to test LED grow lights though, and if any of my viewers out there are using LED grow lights for seed starting, and specifically that first one to three weeks of growth with great success, please share that information in the comments section. Topic two of this video is how you can select an LED grow light like this that will allow you to skip the hardening off process with your tomato plants. Step one, log on to amazon.com and in the search bar type full spectrum LED grow light. Now what I mean by full spectrum is a full spectrum grow light is going to appear yellow or whitish to our eyes like the one beside me does. You're going to see a lot of lights though on Amazon that have a purplish color. And the reason for that is plants absorb more of the blue in the red spectrum um, of light. And so grow light manufacturers manufacture these lights with mostly blue and red spectrum lights so that they appear purplish to us. The intent is for these to be able to grow bigger, faster, <clears throat> plants. I can't recommend them. I've never used one of these purplish lights and I wouldn't like looking at it uh, in my grow room when I'm working on my plants. So what I want you to type in the Amazon search bar is full spectrum LED grow light. The image you see should not be a purple light. It should look like something like that. Now for full spectrum grow lights, you're going to see in the description of the light something that's called a spectral distribution chart. And it looks like this. And all that is, is this is the percentage of the different colors of light that are represented in this grow light. 
you may see some with more blue than red. You may see some with more red than blue. Uh, if you're confused about it, this one I'm showing right now is exactly what was advertised with the grow light that I use. So look for something like this. Step number two is to go into the left-hand side of the search results page and select to filter out everything except lights in the price range of $50 to $100. And the reason I want you to do this is we can assume that most of the lights in the $50 to $100 range will have the same efficiency of converting energy into light for our plants. And this should allow us to ignore all of the other fancy terms that these, prov these manufacturers provide in their descriptions. In step three, what we want to look for is lights with a minimum power draw of 100 watts. Be careful. In the description of the LED light, you're going to see things like this, which might make you think that this is a thousand watt light. That's not what we're looking for. What the manufacturer is doing here is he has a hundred LEDs in the light. Each LED is 10 watts. So 10 times a hundred is a thousand watts of LED. What he's not telling you though is the actual draw of power from your wall socket is only 100 watts. So really that light is only operating at 10% of those 1000 watts that are inside it. Now you're going to have to go down through the description. You'll find somewhere in there just like here where it's going to show you exactly how much power you're drawing from your electrical outlet. And you want a minimum of 100 watts for a 10 by 20 cell like this for a light without fans. For a light with fans, you're gonna want 200 watts minimum. The reason for that is a light without fans, it uses a heat sink, so all 100 watts are going into the light itself. A light with fans like this one is using some of that wattage to power these fans. What we're interested in is 100 watts of usable power for the lights to cover this 10 by 20 inch seed starting tray. Finally, after you found a light that you like, <clears throat> say it doesn't have any fans, it draws 100 watts, it is um, full spectrum, has a similar spectral distribution to the picture that I put up, go through the one star reviews on that light. If there's anything that scares you in those one star reviews, move on to the next light and check that one out. Let's summarize, how do we select and purchase an LED grow light for the last four to six weeks of indoor growth so we can transplant directly into our garden without having to harden off these plants? Number one, choose a full spectrum grow light. Number two, filter those results for everything other than those lights within $50 to $100. Number three, make sure that you're drawing at least 100 watts of power for a light without a fan. For lights with fans, make sure that light draws at least 200 watts of power. And number four, don't forget to check those one-star reviews. Anything that scares you in those one-star reviews about that light, move on to the next one. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and share it. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We'd love to have you on the channel. And don't forget to ring that bell so you'll be notified next week when we put out our next video.